The next topic is turbocharger. So this is one of the popular topics in internal combustion engine. The maximum power a given engine can deliver is limited by the amount of fuel that can be burned efficiently inside the engine. So in chapter three, we learn about the range of V that can be used to have an efficient combustion. So range of equivalent ratio, let's say between 0.5 up to maybe 1.5. So beyond that, we won't have an efficient combustion. In fact, we might not have a combustion at all. Okay. So there is a certain range for the fuel air composition. So in this case, if we want to increase the amount of the fuel, then we need to increase the amount of air as well. So the amount of the fuel is limited by the amount of air that is inducted into each cylinder each cycle. So if this air is compressed to a higher density than ambient prior to entry into the cylinder, the maximum power an engine of fixed dimension can deliver will be increased. So once again, by increasing the density, we will have more air, so we will have more fuel. So for a fixed engine dimension, we will have a higher engine output power. And this follow equation 2.46. So I introduced this equation in chapter 2. So PB here is the engine uh, brick power. It is a function of the volumetric efficiency and then fuel uh, combustion efficiency. And here is, I think the engine speed, Vd, is the engine displacement volume. Q is the lower heating value of the fuel. Density, it is here. So, rho Ai. So, if we can increase the density of air prior to entering the engine, then we will have a higher brake engine power for the same engine size. And this is the fuel air ratio. So, which is usually with the fee between one skin 0.5 up to maybe 1.5. So the term supercharging refers to increasing the air or mixture density by increasing its pressure by increasing its pressure prior to entering the engine cylinder. So regarding this pressure increase, there are three uh, basic methods to accomplish this. One is by using a mechanical supercharging process or supercharging method. So where a spirit pump or blower or compressor is usually driven by power taken from the engine. Okay, from the engine. The second method is uh, called turbocharging method. So in this case, a turbocharger. So turbocharger consists of a compressor and turbine on a single shaft so where a turbocharger is used to boost the inlet air or the inlet mixture density and the energy from this turbocharger is uh, the energy for this turbocharger is obtained from the engine exhaust energy and then the third method here, it's called pressure wave supercharging. So in this case, we use a wave action in the intake and exhaust system to compress the intake mixture. The idea of this uh, wave supercharging is pretty much the same as the intake and exhaust system tuning. So if you can design uh, an intake system in such a way that at the end of the intake stroke process, the air pressure is high, then we'll have more fresh mixture entering the cylinder chamber. There are several different configurations of supercharging and turbocharging method. So in this two uh, feature, we have uh, mechanical supercharging and turbocharging. So in the mechanical supercharger, the compressor, once again, is driven by the power taken from the engine. So it is represented by this segment. So in this segment, we take some of the engine power to propel the compressor and then increasing the air density at this point. So as you can see from this configuration, there will be a penalty of the engine power for sure because of this uh, uh, compressor power 
However, this penalty will be much lower than the power increase because of this increased air flow. So with this supercharger, the engine will have a higher output power, but the fuel efficiency or the fuel economy will be lower. And then the second configuration on the right side here is a two-pool charger. So a two-pool charger consists of a compressor, so represented by C, and a turbine. And it is connected by a shaft here. So let me put a red color here. So this is a shaft uh, connecting uh, both uh, compressor and turbine. So the turbine extract the exhaust gas energy that is used to propel the turbine wheel and then it's uh, propel the shaft here and finally connected to the compressor to propel the compressor wheel. So as you can see in here the, with the turbo charger the engine will have a higher power. So I already mentioned to you several times in the previous chapter. So with a turbo charger uh, an engine will have a higher power. It does have also an increased fuel economy. So the reason for this is because we utilize the exhaust gas energy to propel the turbine. So if you don't utilize this, it will just go to the environment and you waste the energy. So in this case, we extract this energy to propel the turbine wheel and finally propelling the compressor wheel. So with this turbocharger, the engine will have an increase of the brake power as well as increase of the fuel economy. The next one, so the feature on the left side here is showing a combination of an engine driven compressor, so this one, and a turbocharger, this one. So an example of the engine that is used this combination is a large marine engines. And then on the right side, we have a two stage turbocharging. So we have two turbocharger here. So the first uh, tuper charger here and this is the second one so this is called two stage tuper charging this is one uh, a viable approach for uh, providing a very high uh, boost uh, pressure so we can have pressure maybe up to six seven bar so so in this case we will have even higher engine uh, brake power and then the next configuration here on the left side is called a turbo charging with a turbo compounding so in this case, we have a one turbo charger. Okay, so it consists of compressor and turbine. And then we have a second uh, turbine here that is directly connected to the engine shaft. So the idea behind this one is uh, to extract additional exhaust energy. So this is, is an alternative uh, method of increasing engine power and efficiency. So this uh, second turbine produces additional power that is coupled to the engine so that we have additional power. And then the feature on the right side here is showing the turbocharger with intercooler. So intercooler is represented by this I. Okay. So the idea behind having intercooler is to cool the air that exit the compressor. So when the fresh mixture or air exit the compressor, the pressure is increased, the temperature is also increased. So to have an even higher uh, air flow entering the engine, we cool this compressed uh, mixture so that the density increases and thus the air mass entering the engine increases as well. And this schematic, I grab it from an internet just to show you the flow pattern entering the turbo charger so we have a compressor on the left side here so you can imagine that the fresh mixture entering from this side so this is kind of centrifugal compressor so entering from the left side horizontally and then it is compressed and then entering the engine following this uh, flow passage and then we have a charge air cooler CAC that is used to, re, uh, to reduce temperature and thus increasing the mixture density. And then it's enter the engine through this port and then doing the cycle process or the thermodynamic process inside the engine and then it's expelled from this port 
uh, entering the exhaust uh, runner and then it's enter the turbine through this port and then from the turbine it will go to the exhaust system okay so I think you will find a lot of picture in the internet with even nicer than this one but with this schematic at least you can see how the stupid charger work and interact with the engine and this is the cutway of a turbo charger so you can see here on the left side so this is the compressor side this is the compressor side so the fresh air or fresh mixture entering from this side okay and then it will go to the engine through this side okay and this compressor is connected to the turbine side okay via this shaft okay this is the connecting shaft okay and then the exhaust gas entering the turbine from this side okay okay and you can see in here there are two entrants here therefore it's called twin entry turbocharger or twin entry turbine and then it will exit the turbine through this port okay let's look at the analysis of the turbocharger now so in this case we will apply the first law of thermodynamic to the compressor and turbine so pretty much similar like what we learned in thermo one so you can draw a system that is a compressor or turbine so let's say this is compressor and then there will be the flow energy in so this is uh, e in and then we have a uh, e out here okay and then this one is work and then there will be a q and then if we apply the energy balance following the first law of thermodynamic then we will have equation 6.36 so the flow energy here consists of the enthalpy energy and this one is the kinetic energy and the last one here is the potential energy and this one is the heat transfer between the compressor or turbine with the environment and this is the required work in case it is the compressor or the work produced by the turbine and then the second parameter that will be used in this analysis is a stagnation or total enthalpy so it's a zero so this is the enthalpy of a fluid as it is brought to a stop okay so therefore looking at equation 6.36 uh, h0 here equals to the enthalpy plus the term represent the kinetic energy so all term here is on uh, mass unit base and then uh, for an ideal gas with a constant specific heat uh, stagnation or total temperature can be represented by equation 6.38 so I think pretty much we learn about this one in fluid mechanic so we have T0 equals to T plus this one is once again the term represent the kinetic energy term the next one uh, a stagnation or total pressure uh, can also be defined so in this case the total pressure is the static pressure plus the dynamic pressure okay so dynamic pressure uh, once again this is the contribution from the uh, flow so uh, we have equation 6.39 here to represent the correlation between the total or stagnation pressure to the static pressure so it is a function of the temperature ratio as well to the power of gamma over gamma minus one and then back to equation 6.36 so 
I copy the equation on the top right here. So if we uh, ignore or if we neglect a Q, so it's assuming the process undergoes uh, in the adiabatic condition, then equation 6.36 uh, becomes equation 6.40. So in this case, the work uh, produced by the turbine or the work required by the compressor is just the mass flow time the enthalpy different between the inflow and outflow. But you can see there the enthalpy is the stagnation enthalpy. So in this case, we include the contribution of the kinetic energy. And then uh, the compressor efficiency, uh, eta C, here is defined by equation 6.41 pretty much the same as what you have in thermo 1 or thermo 2. The compressor isotropic efficiency is the ratio between the reversible power requirement. So reversible, so it means uh, no irreversibility produced during the process. And then uh, divided by the actual power requirement. So because of the irreversibility presented in the process, the actual power required by the compressor is higher than the reversible power. This feature is showing the uh, enthalpy entropy diagram for a compressor. So we have a uh, inlet state represented by point, uh, 0 0.01. Okay, point 0.01. So it means here is the stagnation point. So represented by P01, so this is the stagnation or total pressure. In case we uh, do not include the contribution of the kinetic energy, then we have a P1 here. This is represented by P1, which is the static pressure. And then at the exit, if it is isentropic process then we have a constant enthalpy so it's mean the uh, sorry we have a constant entropy so it's mean the entropy at the inlet equals to the entropy at the exit so the process line is just straight vertical line from point 0.01 or point 0.1 to point 0.2s or 0.2s so this is in case we have isentropic process inside the compressor so it's mean here we have a uh, adiabatic and reversible and then the actual exit point is a point 0.2 or point 0.02 okay so you can see in here that the actual compressor work is represented by this one so this is the distance between this point so 0 0.1 and uh, 0 0.2 and then the isentropic compressor work is the distance between uh, 0, 0,1 and 0 to S. Okay, so you have equation 6.42 here, the compressor efficiency. And then in case we have a constant CP, then we can simplify equation 6.42 to equation 6.43. In this case, we use the correlation of uh, delta enthalpy equal to Cp time delta T, or in case we have uh, delta stagnation enthalpy, then we have a Cp time delta T0. Then by substituting this correlation to equation 6.42, then you will get equation 6.43. So in this case, the compressor efficiency is represented in terms of the stagnation temperature. For isentropic process where the entropy stays the same, so the entropy at the inlet equals to the entropy at the exit, then we can use this correlation to relate the temperature to the pressure by substituting uh, T0 to S to this equation then you will get equation 6.44. And then the kinetic energy of the gas leaving the compressor is not usually recovered. So in this case, 
we need to use a point to s instead of point zero to s so then we'll have equation 6.45 so this equation is similar to equation 6.42 except we replace the t0 to s by t to s so in this case once again usually we cannot recover the kinetic energy of the gas leaving the compressor so and then you can also uh, calculate the compressor work by equation 6.46 the next one is uh, the turbine analysis so this feature is showing the enthalpy entropy diagram for our turbine so we have an inlet state of a 0 3 okay this is the inlet state of the turbine and then for isentropic process the entropy at the inlet equals to the entropy at the exit so we will have this point at the turbine exit so either represented by point 04s in case this stagnation point or point 4s okay the actual exit condition of the turbine is represented by this condition so there will be some irreversibilities produced during the expansion process inside the turbine so the entropy at the exit is higher than the entropy at the inlet so either we have a point 4 or point 0 4 and this is the actual work produced by the turbine so the turbine efficiency is the ratio between the actual work over the reversible power work so in this case the distance between uh, point 0 0.03 okay point 0 0.03 to point uh, 0.04s okay so because in this case we also assume that the process inside the turbine is an adiabatic process so adiabatic process and then plus reversible process then we have isentropic work this is a uh, several correlation that can be used to calculate the efficiency of the turbine so we have equation 6.49 6.50 here in case it is uh, with a constant cp okay we also have this correlation in case this is isentropic process and then the last equation here is used to calculate the power generated by the turbine okay we have a look at the analysis of individual component which is the compressor and the turbine now we take a look on the analysis of the turbocharger so with a turbocharger the turbine is mechanically linked to the compressor so there will be a losses when the work or energy is transferred from the turbine to the compressor and this loss is represented by uh, mechanical efficiency as shown in equation 6.53 so this mechanical efficiency once can represent the loss uh, occurring when the energy is transferred from the turbine to the compressor another thing that we need to know is that if we have a kind of a general parameter so in this case a dimensionless parameter then we can make a comparison uh, between the turbocharger This feature is showing a schematic of compressor operating map. For you who might be an automotive engineer in the future and one of your tasks is to design an engine. So one of the tasks inside engine design is selecting appropriate turbocharger size. So in this case, uh, you need to select the turbocharger size or compressor size in such a way so that the engine operating condition is inside this envelope so let me draw here so the engine operating point must be inside this envelope so 
your target is for sure to have the operating point inside this island so that the compressor efficiency is maximum if the engine operating point is on the right side of the map so it means it is inside the choking area so you need to select a bigger compressor okay if it is on the left side which is the unstable point then you need to select a smaller compressor so on the horizontal axis here we have the mass flow rate but it is represented as the mass flow rate times the square root of temperature over p0 so this parameter is coming from the dimensional analysis with this parameter you can make a comparison between different compressor size and the vertical axis here represent the pressure ratio so this is the ratio between the pressure at the exit of or the pressure at the compressor inlet this one is another example of the compressor map so this is for centrifugal compressor line of constant corrected speed okay so in here you have another dimensional parameter which uh, which is called corrected speed it is uh, represented by this term okay so uh, in this case the line of uh, constant corrected speed okay and compressor efficiency so compressor efficiency line uh, here is the dash line uh, here are plotted on a graph of pressure ratio against a corrected mass so pressure ratio is the vertical axis and the corrected mass flow rate is the horizontal axis so once again your task is to select the compressor or turbo charger size in such way that the engine operating point is at the maximum efficiency point The next one is the turbine map. So this feature is showing the schematic of the turbine map. So this is a radial turbine performance map that so a line of constant corrected speed. Okay, so it is this one. Okay, and then it is a plot on the corrected uh, mesh. Where is the corrected mesh? Oh, this one. So this is the corrected mass, and then this is the uh, turbine efficiency, and this one is the turbine pressure ratio. So once again, your task is to select the turbine size so that the engine operating condition is at a maximum efficiency. next topic is turbocharger matching so as i mentioned to you one of the tasks when designing an engine is to select appropriate size of the turbocharger so uh, the mass flow through the compressor engine and then turbine and then wastegate in a turbocharged engine must be consistent okay regarding the wastegate here wastegate is a bypass a flow path in case we have uh, too much exhaust energy so because we don't want also to uh, have uh, too much energy in the turbine that will shift the operating point to the low efficiency point so in this case you need to bypass some of the exhaust flow to have an appropriate exhaust energy required by the turbine and this is used or this is done by uh, using a wastegate so the turbine inlet temperature depends on how the engine is operating it's correct so i mean if you have a late combustion so it means you will also have a higher temperature at the end of the exhaust stroke okay so fuel and air flow rate engine speed power these are key parameters that also control the inlet temperature to the turbine so if you have lean combustion so usually the combustion temperature is low and thus the inlet temperature to the turbine is low as well if you have stoichiometric and slightly rich combustion this will result in maximum combustion temperature and thus will result in higher inlet temperature to the turbine as well 
the turbine supplies the power that drive the compressor okay and the turbine and compressor operates at the same speed this is important so uh, the turbine is connected mechanically through a single shaft to the compressor so both compressor and turbine will have the same speed okay and the sum of the turbine mass flow rate plus that through the wastegate equals to the engine exhaust flow makes sense okay and then further the relative geometric sizing of the turbocharger and the engine affect their joint performance therefore we need to have an appropriate size of the turbocharger okay and the objective is once again to have a higher engine thermal efficiency this feature showing the schematic uh, that illustrate the compressor engine and turbine matching so the air flow enter the engine through this side so assuming we don't have uh, exhaust gas recirculation so it's only air and in this case let's say we have gti or diesel engine so only fresh air enter the compressor and then at the exit of the compressor this fresh air will enter the intercooler for further volumetric efficiency improvement and then it enter the engine okay through this point and then uh, there will be a fuel introduction to the engine directly this is because of gti or maybe diesel so and then the engine uh, uh, produces uh, power here brick power and then at the exit of the engine then we have the total mass flow which is the sum of the field flow and the uh, air flow okay and then this point uh, it is split it either most of the mass going to the turbine or some of the mass is bypassed through the wastegate once again so if we have too much exhaust energy then we need to split some of this exhaust mass flow through the wastegate so this kind of bypass uh, flow path so will go to this point okay and then so we have some of uh, the exhaust gas uh, bypass from the turbine and then most of the uh, gas will flow from the turbine and then in this case we have a single shaft connecting the turbine to the compressor so that both compressor and turbine have the same speed so this is just showing the schematic about the mass flow rate uh, between the engine and the compressor and this will help us to do a turbocharger matching also we need to note that for the turbocharger to be providing significant boost the engine must be operating at mid to higher load okay must be okay so under lightly loaded condition especially at a lower engine speed there is insufficient engine exhaust flow to generate enough turbine power to provide significant air compression so under these conditions the turbocharger effectively idle so it means it doesn't work at all so accordingly a boost threshold is defined so it is the engine speed so rpm at wide open throttle at which turbocharger air compression start to occur and then the problem of over speeding the turbocharger and generating high boost level and a very high cylinder pressure often required that some of the exhaust be bypassed around the turbine so this is the reason why most of the turbine is equipped by a wastegate okay so this is a bypass valve that once again is used to control the amount of the exhaust energy required by the turbine this feature is showing a schematic of the turbocharger cutaway and this turbocharger is equipped by a wastegate and the wastegate is operated mechanically so uh, this is the turbine side and this one is the compressor, compressor side and this is the wastegate component so i put let's say put yellow here this is the wastegate component which is mechanically connected to the compressor side by this uh, link okay and at the end of uh, this uh, wastegate link there will be a pressure measurement 
So this pressure measurement uh, will sense the pressure at the compressor exit. So if the pressure at the compressor exit is above the target, then this mechanical control will govern the whisket to open. Okay, will make the whisket to open. So the exhaust gas flow is coming from this side. So it will uh, control the whisket opening or it will request the whisket to open so that some of the exhaust gas will be bypass okay will be bypass through this direction okay so that the pressure at the compressor exit will be lower and match to the targeted pressure level okay the relative sizing of the turbocharger and the engine significantly influence their combined behavior it makes sense i mentioned to you your task is to make sure that the turbocharger operating point is at maximum efficiency point okay so a relatively small turbocharger provide a higher compressor boost level in the lower engine speed range and less boost at a higher engine speed range and then a larger turbocharger has the inverse behavior so it's lower boost at the lower uh, speeds and a higher boost at the higher speed so depending on what will be the characteristic of the engine operating point either we can select a slightly smaller turbocharger or slightly a larger turbocharger or maybe somewhere in between okay higher boost at lower speed is effective at offsetting turbo lag okay so this is a phenomenon in automotive application where following a rapid opening of the throttle valve the rotational inertia of the turbocharger delay it's speeding up which delay the production of the desired increase in boost pressure so that's why in this case if you have a smaller turbocharger it will help on offsetting this turbo lag phenomenon okay we have completed this chapter discussion if you have any question you can send an email to me or you can ask me in the next class review meeting thank you